Well, uh, good afternoon, Mike. Uh, yeah, there are big changes happening. We're in a uh, new world in the oil industry. Uh, maybe that's not felt so much in the U.S., but internationally, there is a lot of turmoil. And the big things that are coming up, uh, one is, of course, the embargo that is being placed on all Russian oil exports. That kicks in in December. And then after that, uh, in February, there's a embargo on all products as well. And at the same time with that, there is a, uh, a ban on using all the ships, any ships that are either uh, insured by the OECD or uh, financed that are carrying oil uh, that is Russian origin or products are Russian origin. So what you're going to have is a, a loss of about 3 million barrels of oil and 2 million barrels of products coming up. And that's maybe around November it will start. However, before that happens, uh, I'm sure many who are involved in the either physical or financial market will start thinking about taking a position. So if you're in the physical market, you'll be building inventory. And if you're speculating or hedging or looking out for the future opportunities, you'll be in the paper market. So those are realities. And that's a lot of oil that's going to come out for sure. Uh, the Europeans, of course, have a real issue in their economy, and there's no doubt there's a recession there. But China, by that time, may well have recovered. And China today is consuming about 13 million, one three. But uh, by the end of the year, they may well be back at 14 and a half, which is where they normally are. So that's uh, those are all important factors that I think will reverse this uh, soft market and, and bring it back up to where it was a few months ago. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting because if you look out, I mean, right now, the, the Brent futures curve, it's it sort of prices are, are slightly below uh, the, the spot rates at this point. So, you know, they're staying supported, but they're not showing a big premium. And what about the idea that, yes, we have the embargoes coming and, yes, there have been restrictions already, but one way or another, Russian oil, Russian products are making their way onto the global market, uh, even if not to uh, those buyers that are, that are going to be enforcing an embargo. Well, th there was a six-month period where uh, they could manage. And, uh, you know, the Russians have a huge fleet of VLCCs, uh, so they could manage a lot of their shipping. But uh, starting uh, around uh, the end of this year, uh, those ships will not be usable. Uh, in fact, quite a few of them are already uh, at anchor and not working because countries don't want to deal with anything Russian or anything carrying Russian products. So I would not use the past six months uh, as an indication of where we're headed. Uh, we have seen demand increase. Uh, we have also seen slight supply increase. But look, OPEC is already doing the most it can, another half a million barrels perhaps. Uh, and, and who else is going to deliver oil? Uh, Iran has serious problems in its negotiations. They can't move forward. And you're going to have a lot of switching of uh, gas with oil just because gas is so expensive, uh, what used to be the LNG, but also the pipeline gas. Mm -hmm. So there will be demand for oil in that sense. Uh, people don't want to use coal if they can get away with a liquid that is less damaging. And incidentally, the Freeport fire in, uh, in the U.S. took 2 billion cubic feet of gas out of the international markets. Uh, and to top that up, uh, U.S. gas supplies have been flat for almost a year. So mm -hmm. what's left? Uh, oil and higher prices. Yeah, and, and, I mean, and, and that's in a, in a year when there have been essentially zero uh, hurricanes or disruptions uh, of that sort, luckily. Um, you, you say that you, you would expect all these factors to build uh, back toward oil near the highs we saw a few months ago. Uh, at what level do you see there being serious demand destruction globally? Well, you have different markets, and they have different tolerance. Uh, there's also different levels of subsidy. Uh, I, I would hope that we don't go uh, much higher than 110 or 115, because it's not in the interest of the oil industry. It's certainly not in the interest of OPEC and others. It destroys demand, as you're saying. And uh, at those levels, uh, people will try to uh, just save, uh, economize, uh, be more efficient with what they have, but at the same time use less energy. So cheaper energy is actually better for the industry 
of course, it has to be affordable and sustainable. Uh, but uh, hopefully, we won't see it as high as it was. But uh, you know, it, there's so many yeah. un unpredictable events happening. There are, uh, and certainly, much higher prices not comfortable really for anybody. Supplier demand side. Uh, Sadat, thank you very much.